We open with M M556 verses 1 through 5. Dear Christians, one and all rejoice. page 
151. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us.
Yes. Yes. All right. Raise your hand if you were ever afraid of the dark at one time in your life. Raise your hand if you ever maybe thought there was like a monster in your closet or in the bed or something. No. It also can raise your hands too. Don't be, don't be shy. Well, God tells us not to be afraid. Many times throughout the Bible, he tells us not to be afraid, not to fear. And we'll hear that again in our next lesson. Jesus sends us the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, so we can not be afraid, not worry about anything. In particular, he's talking about telling other people about Jesus. Or would any of you guys ever be uh, nervous or scared or afraid to tell somebody in school about Jesus or invite them to church? No. Would you maybe be nervous or afraid to do that to some people? Well, in our lesson we're going to hear next, uh, St. Peter is telling us not to be afraid to, to tell other people about Jesus and what he's done for us. Amen. The epistle is from 1 Peter chapter 3. Now who is there to harm you if you are zealous for what is good? But even if you should suffer for righteousness' sake, you will be blessed. Have no fear of them, nor be troubled. But in your hearts regard Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for the reason for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and respect, having a good conscience, so that when you are slandered, those who revile your good behavior in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if that should be God's will, than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which he went and proclaimed to the spirits in prison, because they formerly did not obey, when God's patience waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was being prepared, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were brought safely through water. Baptism which corresponds to this, now saves you. Not as the removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, with angels, authorities, and powers having been subjected to him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. In that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father. And I will love him and manifest myself to him. This is the Gospel of our Lord. We confess together our Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one of the Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God, very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and then was incarnated by the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made a man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and ascended to heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will not have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the Giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission.
grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ.
Baptism. Baptism now saves you. We should not be afraid of death. Also, we should not be afraid of being persecuted for our Christian faith. Peter here is talking about Christians being persecuted and suffering for doing the right thing. We don't want to take this out of context. We are not being put to death yet. We're not being persecuted to the point that the Christians were during the Roman Empire. And it does seem like we're being persecuted more and more. Thankfully, we live in a state where our governor recognizes religious freedom and the Constitution. But in some states, there are still a lot more restrictions on worship. Pastors are being fined or arrested for only drive-in services. All the while, two blocks down, there's a lot more people lined up at Colonel McBurger King, and they don't get any citations or fines. Churches must close their doors, but everyone is free to go to Walmart and spend the almighty dollar. There are even states where there are rumors of pastors having to give a list of everyone who attended their worship service to the authorities. So we know it's for the protection of the community, for the greater good. They say we need to know who might have been exposed to the virus. Persecution is a stark reality for many Christians in the world. And someday it may become more real and more severe for us. We, we get a taste of what it might be, but we are still free. We still don't have it that bad. But against all this opposition to Christianity, Peter says, have no fear of them, the people who are persecuting you because you are doing what is right, because you are living out the Christian faith. He says, have no fear of them, nor be troubled, but in your hearts honor Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you, yet do it with gentleness and respect. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid of what people might think of you if you act like a Christian. Don't be afraid to stand up for your belief in Jesus as your Savior. Don't worry about being rejected by friends or family because you trust that Jesus Christ is your Savior. And you live a life that reflects your Christian values. We should not be afraid to take a stand and defend our faith. We should not be afraid of anything on earth or under the earth. Do not be afraid of what man can do. Do not fear what might happen to you in this fallen world. We might feel pain, we might get sick, we might suffer from cancer or diabetes, we might suffer from mental illness or depression. This month, May, is Mental Health Awareness Month. We continue to pray for those who suffer from depression, schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, PTSD, Alzheimer's, dementia, and all of the mental illnesses that the devil uses to attack us in this fallen world. There is much we suffer from in this world, both physical and mental. Some of our pain is 
seen by others, some of it we keep inside. The grief, the heartache. No matter what happens, no matter what could happen, we should not be afraid. And this includes the coronavirus. We should not be overcome by fear of COVID-19. If you are young and healthy, do not be afraid to come back to church. If you are older, if you have an underlying condition, if you have a fever, you have freedom to stay home and worship via the internet or TV. Do not be afraid to talk to your neighbors. You can keep your social distance and give them a phone call. Please talk to your family and friends who are still isolated. Our dear members and loved ones in nursing homes have been quarantined a long time now. They need our phone calls and prayers. You might know someone who is older or who has an underlying condition. Please check on them and see if they need any groceries or anything. This is our calling to help our neighbors, especially those who are believers, those who are in our church. It sounds like favoritism, but St. Paul instructs us to care for our brothers and sisters in Christ. This doesn't mean that we neglect unbelievers. Yes, we reach out to the unchurched. They still need our care. They still need to hear the saving words of the gospel. The unbelievers, should, though, they should see our care for one another. They should see how we love one another and wonder why we have that hope within us. To beg the question, when people look at you, can they tell that you're a Christian by the way you act? Has anyone ever come up to you and asked you for the reason, for the hope that is in you? Are we doing something wrong if this doesn't happen to us every day? Or Perhaps we might just be living faithfully out our vocation, our Christian life. You don't get a reward for going the speed limit. Sometimes doing the right thing goes unnoticed. The saving words of the gospel are that Jesus died for our sins on the cross. He took all our iniquities away by dying on the tree. Jesus was really dead and he was really buried. But on the third day, Jesus came back to life from the dead. Jesus Christ is risen. And he indeed gives all who believe in him eternal life. Our text says, For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the Spirit. The Holy Spirit gives us the power not to be afraid. Right now, our biggest fear might be the coronavirus or the effects of the virus on our world. Our text from First Peter is about not being afraid to suffer or standing up to your faith. We should not be ashamed to be Christians. We should not be afraid to tell our neighbors about Christ. The Holy Spirit gives us hope. He is our comforter. The Holy Spirit has already come. He has come to us at our baptism. We're preparing to celebrate Pentecost in a few weeks. But the Spirit has come to you at your baptism when the Word, when you first heard the Word of God, maybe even before your baptism, maybe in your mother's womb, when you heard the Word, the Holy Spirit worked in you. And as you continue to worship through Word and sacrament, you 
grow in faith and the Holy Spirit continues to come to you and enrich you. Jesus, talking about the Holy Spirit, said, And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever. Jesus sent us the Holy Spirit to be our helper, our comforter. When we first heard the words of Jesus in our mother's womb, the Spirit was there. Baptism saves you as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. God sees you as his baptized child. His Holy Spirit helps us to not be afraid of anything that can happen to our bodies because our souls are safe with Christ. And our bodies will rise again to live with Jesus forever. We will arise just as he is risen. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Jesus Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Dolan, Don, Lee. 
Lisa, Roger, Carla, Jacob, Fred, Bonnie, Lulu, and all those whom we name before you in our hearts. That God would grant healing to their bodies, peace for their minds, and consolation in their grief and sorrows. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the nation, for those who lead our nation, for the end of the pandemic, for peace among nations, for those who fight to defend peace, especially Ron, Mike, John, Taylor, Andrew, Brittany, Trevor, Jake, Lee, Jonathan, Jameson, Jens, Brett, and all first responders, fire, fighters, and law enforcement officers, including Luke, Mike and Jake. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Rosie Specht fell asleep in the arms of Jesus this week. We pray now for her family. For the family of Rosie and all those who mourn, that they may be comforted with the hope of the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth, to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship, with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, and said, Take eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you, for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you. 